everyone, Red Mist back, and this time we're going to have a little look at KG panels to pull custom artwork into our game. So before you do that, you're going to need some textures to play with. Now I've already got some, I'll include some on my blog, and you'll need to go and have a look and download them. So I have to create them in a special location. So I'm putting them in my program files World of Warcraft. Underneath Interface, I've created an extra directory. So you can see there it's World of Warcraft slash interface slash textures and you can see I've got a whole bunch of TGA files in there. Now they have to be TGA files and they have to be special TGA files. These TGAs or Targa files you create them in an art package. I've used Adobe Photoshop and notice something special about them. They are perfectly square. Um, they have to be powers of two so they can be a rectangle but they'll need to be powers of two. So that's 128 times 128 or 256 by 256 if they're not perfectly powers of two, they will not load into the game. So I've saved this texture here. It's got a transparent background as well. So you'll need to create a target file with a transparent background that's a power of two. That's what you need to do to start off with. Okay, so once you've got some textures to play with, we can start using KG panels. So slash KG panels config to get into the configuration. And we're going to start off with an artwork that is a background. Now the way you do this is to create an artwork library. So we're going to call it Chat Flare. You have to click OK. And we're going to pull in from our texture library, slash, slash, interface, slash, slash, textures, slash, slash, and then the name of the TGA file. I've got one called sidebezel.tga. So we can see the artwork has appeared underneath the art library. So you have to create one of those in the art library before you can put it into a panel. Now let's create a panel. So I've gone into active panel. I've created a new one, said OK, and asked it to create. So we now have a panel. And this panel is unlocked and I can move it around and resize it any way I want. So we're going to do a few things to this panel. So the things that we're going to do with this panel first is make sure it's unlocked and you can see lots and lots of different options. We're going to change the background color style to none. We don't want anything in the background, otherwise it will look like it's got a pale color. We're also going to change the strata to high, and this is the layer in the game that it appears, so above buttons or below buttons, for example. And we're going to look for our texture that we just created in our art library that was called Chat Flare. Now it's not there. Now the reason it's not there is because the way that Blizzard's game works is it loads textures on demand. So when the uh, game loads up, it loads them up, and then it doesn't use really any more system resources. So we're going to have to reload the console. Now I've got a shortcut slash RL to do so. Uh, but you'll need to reload the console. And then we go back into our KG panels config. And we go into our, our active panels. Unlock our chat panel that we just created. And now when you go into texture options, you can see we've got a new one called chat flare. So that's a new texture that's loaded into the game. And we can now move that into position. I want to create kind of a nice looking background sort of edge to my chat window to match the artwork I've been playing around with on the right hand side of my window. You can get it roughly the right size but the great thing about KG panels is it doesn't really matter um, because you don't have to use the mouse to position things if it goes off of the edge of the screen. What you can do is you can go into your main active panel selection window, the root, so chat flare in this particular case. And you can see I can change the panel width, the height, um, and very, very precisely position the panel so that the artwork is exactly where you want it to be on the screen. So I've changed the size, said OK, and I can also nudge it slightly. So I can nudge up and down, get it into exactly the place that I want. Notice I've still got a border around this window as well. And that's useful to help position things when you're looking at things on the window that are small. But I'm just going to turn off that border Texture options, change it from Blizzard's tooltip to none, and now you can see that that border's gone. Really as simple as that. Once you're happy with the position of this window, and you're happy with the strata, so you can see there I've changed the background and the, width, the buttons appear over the top, but I actually quite like it hiding just a little bit of the buttons. I've selected this window's default, which is to not intercept mouse clicks, which means that your mouse will completely ignore this panel once you've locked it. So that's it. I've created a bezel around the outside of my chat window. I think it adds a nice little flair to it, and it looks pretty cool. Now, a lot of people will be wanting to add these sorts of textures to not just the screen itself, not to a static window, but to a window that moves. So let's do that. 
Now I've got some backgrounds I've already created that go around my map. And I've got one called Map Angel. Now it sits around my map, but I'm going to reuse that. So let's create a new panel, and we're going to put it around our player window. So that's the window with a little portrait of myself. I'm going to call it Player Frame and create my new panel. There it is. So I'm going to put it around this window my mouse is highlighting at the moment. So I've got a special macro to help, so I'm going to zoom in on that. This macro I've bound to a button, and you can see it's slash script, chat frame one, colon, add message, brackets, get mouse focus, brackets, brackets, colon, get name, brackets, brackets, and then close the brackets. Lots of brackets there. Now I've bound that to a, a key over here. Now that means that anywhere I put my mouse and I press that key, so I'm not clicking my mouse here, I'm pressing the key, you can see it's showing in my chat frame the name of the window or the frame that I've got my mouse on. So there we've got the Pitbull Unit Frame 1. I use Pitbull. If you don't, you'll still be able to see the unit names, the, the frame names. So let's take our texture options and we're going to put our texture in there, the Map Angel, so we can see it. Now, just as we did before, we're going to get rid of the Blizzard tooltip around the edge. And we're also going to change the background colour style to None, so that we don't see that pale overlay on the texture. Let's make it roughly the size that we want to fit around that character frame. And we're going to set the strata to high so it appears over the top. Now we're going to need to lock this pane to a special location. So here's the parent frame and we're going to type that name in that we found out our player window was. Pitbull unit frame 1. I'll copy it, press OK and I'll paste it also into the anchor frame. So that's the parent frame and the anchor frame. And this is now locked to that player frame. It doesn't mean we can't move it. Um, all it means is that you're moving it now relative to that underlying window, that unit frame. So get it to roughly the size that I want. Kind of happy with it there. I think I need to nudge it up and down a little bit just to get it into exactly the position I want. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I think that's pretty good there. So we're going to lock the panel. Well, let's bring up um, Pitbull's window. So this is the uh, configuration panel for Pitbull, which is my unit frames. So we click on Player, Other, Position, and with Pitbull it's very easy to move these little player frames. So now you can see as if by magic, the uh, custom artwork now goes with that window, so it doesn't just lock itself to the screen. It's a fantastically useful little tool, mod, it lets you put custom artwork into your game anywhere you want. Get creative, uh, use some textures that you find on the web, as long as you're allowed to. Make sure they're transparent TGA files, and that is how you put textures in-game. Cheers for watching everyone, bye!